Welcome back. You've probably heard of the term S-M-A-R-T, making your goals smart. Well, right now we're going to be talking about how to make your goals clear and understandable. So, David, what do you think about making goals, project goals, personal goals, whatever they are, how do you make these understandable? Well, first of all, it's a great question, Phil. First of all, they have to be very specific and they have to be actionable. And they have to, add, and then I think when you're working on a project, you need to put it in terms that the business or your customer can understand. You know, it's to me that's that's what creates value. Mm. I mean, it gets back to how do I get resources? How do I get support? How do I get people engaged in meetings? It's because if you're very clear about the business value and you're mm. measuring that, you can show progress. Plus, it also gets engagement from your customer and get support for resources you need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Too often we put the goals aren't clear or you put too many goals down. Mm. You know, the rule, the, I know everybody's familiar with the 80-20 rule, but it's clearly you can have some, a subset of some sub-goals that you might want to uh, have and maybe even communicate. But when it really gets down to it, what are those key driving metrics and those goals that are, you know define success in this project? And it usually comes down to three or four. It doesn't come down to ten or fifteen. And you know the old say the saying that I say all the time to whether it's presentations or goals, less is sometimes more. You know people can only focus on so much. What are the key drivers? And so I start with, you know, specific, clear, business in business terms, what those goals are, actionable, and I usually try to limit those on, and then try to put key metrics where possible mm. to show that you're, you're measuring it, whether it's financial, whether it's a productivity improvement, mm. whether it's reducing risk. It would be a number of different areas where those goals can be, but try to put something that's measurable. Mm. So I know you deal with a lot of project managers, coaching them. They work with you mm -hmm. trying to, you know, get the projects done. But how do you coach and mentor these folks when you find their goals going, you know, off track or maybe they're trying to do too many things? Do you have some mentoring interaction with them in that regard? Absolutely. And to me, one of the key words that I use all the time is, is focus. Understand what you're trying to do right now, understand what it, it, it's, it's really both short term and long term. A lot okay. of times when you get into issues is you got to go back to what are your key goals for the project and, and let's pull those out again. Let's keep mm. those front and center. And then we look at the, what the short term, what we have to do. I mean, that's one of the things great about Agile. Not that waterfall isn't important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's needs to do waterfall. But one thing that's great about Agile is whether you're doing a two-week sprint or a three-week <laughs> sprint, it's what did you get done, right. what do you have yet to do, <laughs> what are your barriers, yep. and your back, everything else goes in the backlog, mm. so you have that accountability, mm. and that's one of the great things about Agile. Absolutely. And so yes. it's the same thing about sometimes taking these mm. key goals and then breaking down to maybe some short-term goals mm. that you're, you know, you're behind on your project or you're stuck on something. What do we need to accomplish in the next week, mm. two weeks? Keep it very front and center and very focused. So mm. it's... Big picture, but then a lot of times when you're bogged down, what's the shorter term picture mm. when you're working with your – and keep it – because you have to clear your mind a little bit in that process <laughs> and, and, and focus. Absolutely. I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. And while this has been a thought, you know, in general space, I think it's very important that people focus on the importance of being agile when it even comes to their personal goals, not just project goals. Absolutely. You know, it's that accountability and that focus that I think. And that, you know, yes, we talk about the interim with Agile, how you can do things interlily, mm. and, and it does shorten it. But I think the bigger picture is, is that focused area where, you know, you're accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you, you going to get done during that sprint mm. or sprints? You know, what are your barriers? It, in a waterfall project or something longer, you know, there's a you, there's a lot of fluff and a lot of buffering that can go on <laughs> in that process, and yep. it, waterfall's still important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But agile to me, it really does add some accountability and some focus, which I think sometimes even with goals is missing in the process. Absolutely. The Absolutely. other thing that I'd like to say in terms uh, is it's really around communications, but it also fits right in with goals, mm -hmm. and that is I always ask my PMs, 
of whatever they're doing, whether it's a meeting, mm -hmm. whether it's a goal setting session, who's your audience? Uh -huh. And then what do they need to know? And, you know, I usually play the card of so what and who cares? <laughs> it, I mean, I know my team gets tired of hearing it. I go, so what? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Why is this important? Mm -hmm. And you'd be able to define that. And I think that's critical. The other thing is the audience. Who's your audience? So often when we either have a meeting or a presentation, even more so, mm. we talk, a lot of times I see individuals want to tell their audience all the stuff that I know. <laughs> yeah. You can only, your audience can only have so, so much attention span. <laughs> you know, I start with who's your audience, mm. what do they need to know, what's going to happen, why, what's the impact to them. Mm. And, and maybe a little bit of the how, mm -hmm. but most importantly is in a meeting or a session, you're usually trying to do something, change mm -hmm. a behavior, stop yeah. something, mm -hmm. start something, and define that. What are you trying to change in this meeting or this presentation? Educate, change a behavior, whatever it is, define that. And then what are the three most important things that you want to impart in that audience? Mm -hmm. And then go build your 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 either your presentation mm. or maybe your points on your meeting for to facilitate because bringing everything in and I know Phil you've been there before where somebody <laughs> tells them for an hour everything they know about this in 15 minutes you look around and your audience in the room or whatever or on the call is is totally disengaged oh, absolutely yeah. so you know and that comes right back to goal setting too mm, mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, what is clear, concise, understandable goals that are usually the most important ones mm. and that your audience can understand? Absolutely. And by building that correctly, mm. um, it's so important. It goes right into, we talk about this in the, PM, in the PMI training. Mm -hmm. You know, the, so much is missed on not planning up front. And That's goal true. setting is one of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it starts your whole project. Mm. So. Mm. Really great information, David. Thank you very much. So when you've got your goals all clear, all straight, there's another key factor that enables the project manager flourish and thrive. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about next. Because, hey, you ever been a project manager churning out reports that no one's looking at, no one's reading the reports? The reason for them not reading the reports is because you haven't hit those three most important things that David is talking about. And to go into our next point, some of those things that people put into reports but are not needed are unwanted metrics. People reporting an earned value when management has no clue what it even means. Right. So in our next section, David, it will be in, kind of important and interesting at the same time to talk about the importance of key metrics up front and how are these metrics brought into the project in such a way that they are of value to the customer. So when we come back, we're going to be talking about that. Don't go away. We'll be back in a few minutes.